1954, they only made 814 cars. Now there's probably only 300 left in the world. We're at Le Mans, we're sitting at the breakfast table and I just happened to say to somebody across the table from us that I'd really love to get a 54 to build for the Monterey Classics. The guy said, I've got one in my backyard. He said that it needed some work and when we picked it up here, he was right, it needed some work. I remember when we sent it off to the acid dippers, we took book on it that uh, it had either come back in a bucket or on the back of a truck, but thankfully it came back on the truck. We had to overcome a lot of hurdles. We had to remake the chassis, we had to remake everything to our specifications, but keeping it in the scheme of things for historic racing. We had the drawings from Porsche with all the um, correct measurements. We've also got the original 1954 Select jigging for the car. So which made it easier for us to build the car back to factory specifications. We have a racing fuel cell. We changed that from the standard one. This is more for a safety thing, so that the fuel doesn't slosh around. Plus if we do have an accident, there's less chance of a explosion. This is an Oberg. The oil runs through here from the engine. If the engine is making a funny noise or it seems down on power, we can take this off and we can read the screen. The technicians can read the screen as to what's wrong with the engine. Usually if there's gold in there, we've got a problem, the engine's got to come out. On a lot of these cars too, you hear of people talking about matching numbers, which makes them more valuable. This car is all matching number as well. These little tags that we put on the windscreen and on the back windscreen are in case when the car gets sideways, if the air gets inside the car, the front and rear windscreens can pop out because they're only put in a rubber because of the speeds that we're doing. It's actually a NASCAR type thing, which we've carried over onto these cars. As you can see, we've got the larger Carrera GT brakes. These are all aluminium. Then we have to wire these caps in to stop these coming off at high speed. Everything here is actually um, period correct. We sent the gauges away to Hollywood gauges so that they could redo the gauges in the original green. We made the steering wheel quick release, which doesn't come standard on a um, original 54, obviously. This makes easy access in and out of the car, and it brings the steering wheel closer to me and closer to the gear shift. We hand make our whole exhaust system ourselves. The, the whole exhaust is made out of Inconel. 356s are renowned when you go up a bit of a bump and the exhaust hits and that sort of stuff, so this way here it keeps it all up under the body. Everything on the car has got a purpose. These brackets here are made to stop the Perspex window flying out of the back. So what we've also done is made a right angle here so it directs the air down into the air vents here, direct the air straight into these coal boxes where the tops of the carburetors are. The car runs basically a stock standard engine except for the internals. Everything outside looks stock standard. These cars had 4,400 RPM, they had 55 horsepower. We're revving this car to 9,000 RPM and we've got threefold that horsepower at the wheels. So you can imagine we've got a 50 year old engine trying to pump out all this power, so we do have failures, but we've been slowly chipping away at it and we've just about got the uh, problem under control. We're racing against cars with double the horsepower, but you've got to remember this car doesn't weigh very much. I've been against Mustangs and Corvettes at Eastern Creek, and they just blow past me on the straight, but by turn one, I'm right back on them because I don't have to brake. I, I get right to the 100 metre mark, dab the brakes and turn in. And then coming into the braking at the end, I just drive on past them. Now we've got our sights on the Ferraris and those sort of ones that we race against at Monterey. Now you've got to remember, they're a $30 million car. We're, we're actually still beating a lot of them first time that they put us out with all the Ferraris. One of the Ferraris actually sold the night before at Monterey for 38.4 million and we were starting directly behind it. Now all we could think of was, gee, imagine hitting that. <laughs> we're trying to get it uh, invited to Le Mans for 2016. We'll keep pushing ahead for that and then Goodwood as well. So. Purchase it, a few people have tried, but it's not gonna happen. I've just got no intentions at all of selling it. 
we spent probably two years, two guys, seven days a week to get this car ready. It takes longer to build this than it takes to build an F1 car. 